From Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, my name is Jovina. This is The Daily Creature. Thanks for being here. Let us jump right in with today's animal, Beecroft's Tree Hyrax. Sounds like fun. Let's consult our trusty Simon & Schuster's Guide to Mammals to find out a bit more about this delightful little creature. Dendrohyrax dorsalis, or Beecroft's Tree Hyrax, is an herbivorous arboreal animal which spends the daytime in tree hollows. It descends from the trees to forage at night. It is usually solitary, but small groups of two or three individuals are often seen. The main predators of the hyrax are leopards, python. You know what? Let's pause for a moment. I have an idea. I'd like to venture a thought. Go with me on this. What if we scrap the tree hyrax? No offense to Beecroft. And make some animals up. It's a break in routine, I know, but I find sometimes a break in routine really stokes the fires of creativity. Besides, it's a wonderful opportunity to use our imaginations. It's a huge part of our toolkit as artists, and uh, let's flex that imagination today. What do you think? Too crazy? Too strange? No, let's do it. Let's get weird. And a mix-up, a drawing exercise. Okay, here we go. What happens when you combine a rat and an elephant? Reference if you got them. Rat plus elephant equals what? We are going to draw a mixture of these two creatures here. We got our references going, have a good look. Elephant plus rat, rat plus elephant. What do we name this guy? I'm gonna call him Ratifant. Now you might wanna go with Ratcoderm, you might prefer Elorat, but I like Ratifant and it's going to stick. Let's talk about this for a moment. It's a Sharpie marker. It's a wonderful marker. It's a great artistic tool. It is a permanent marker. So if you happen to use one of these, do use it carefully. And uh, this one's equipped with two tips, a fine tip and a fat tip. That should come in handy. So we're going to have some fun with this creature. We'll give a basic profile of our ratifant. I'd like to use the whole page in this case. I'm going to attempt to anyway. Um, and when considering the mixture of two animals, you as the artist get to make those choices. Uh, which part is which? Head of an elephant, head of a rat. Tail of an elephant, tail of a rat. In this case, I'm going to start with the head and I'm gonna do predominantly rat head. So here we go. Predominantly rat head. We're gonna do that sort of snout, a little nose there, like so. Uh, right away, however, I think I'd like to mix it up and add tusks. There we go. And maybe, maybe give him a little bit of both when it comes to the head, really. The jaw and the tusk more elephant-like, the head more rat-like. And we'll stick with little ratty ears as well. Not the ears of an elephant, but the little round ears of a rat. And I think that arching body of a rat will do that as well. That, that high rat rear that we all love. Ooh, he's big. And uh, let's see, let's follow up with more elephant underneath, I think. I'm going to give our ratifant very elephant feet. You know those big elephant feet. And I'm nearly down to the bottom of my page here and what's visible. So I'm going to come up for one of those toenails and another toenail and that big cylindrical elephant foot. A couple of knee wrinkles might be nice. I'm taking a sort of cartoony approach with this guy and I'm okay with that. I'm going to raise one other leg just to show that he's got that other leg. We don't want to leave that out. He's raising it high on the other side of his body. And I'll add a few little crosshatch sort of lines down there just to show there's a bit of a 
a shadow where that raised leg is. And of course, wrinkly knees, knobbly knees. What character in which book is described by a mouse as having knobbly knees? Email me the answer to that and I'll send you some clay. Listen, I'm not sure if I can actually do that now that we talk about it, now that we think about it. But email me the answer anyway. And if few of you email me, then I'll send you some clay. There are lots of emails. No clay, friends. Doing a bit of the shading underneath, I've added this leg here as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do some, some knee wrinkles there. Which kind of tail should we go for? Do we like the elephant tail or the rat tail? Now there are no rights or wrongs when it comes to art making friends. You know I'm in support of that idea. However, I do feel sometimes there are stronger choices. Um, but of course it's all based on what I wanna do, the choice I wanna make, as it is for your animal, based on the choices that you make. And uh, again, there are no right or wrong choices. There are simply strong ones and less strong. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to the rat tail. All due respect to the tail of an elephant, which is among other things, a fly swatter. The rat tail, scaly, long, kind of icky. I'm gonna add these little lines for some reason. Look at those little lines in the tail. I think I'm actually going off the page slightly. Am I going off the page slightly? No, I'm okay there. And I think I might add a bit of a scatter of short little kind of lines here to show that our friend here, the ratifant, he's a bit furry on top, you know? He's got that, he's got a rat back. Rat back. It's not a great thing necessarily to have a rat back unless you're a rat or a ratifant. I'm gonna add little furrows in his brow. I'm not sure why I added those. I don't think that elephants have those necessarily. Oh, they might. Rats certainly don't have them. I think I may have added those because I often have those sort of wrinkles in my forehead. They say we often draw ourselves. And I think that's what I have done here. Ratifant. Look at this ratifant. What else can we add to him, friends? Maybe some whiskers? This is such a fat line, though. I don't think I can do any whiskers. What did you say? Use the other side. The finer point, of course. You're a genius. Thanks, guys. I'm going to add these whiskers now. Simple little lines like that. And you know what? I'm going to go a little crazy, as they say. It's a highly sensitive nose, this guy. While I'm at it with this little fine point tip, I want to go in and just add a few other, other little, little details here and there. I like to do teeny tiny X's and dots. And I don't know why. But once I get them all over the creature, it makes me feel like I'm closer to something that's finished, something that I can leave alone. Sometimes you're working on a drawing or a sculpture and you, you love it, you're enjoying it, but you realize you wanna leave it alone. You're ready to leave it alone. And I'm almost ready to leave this one alone. I noticed that I could add a few more of these cross-hatched lines, some of the places where Maybe our ratifant is, is needing some shadow. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. Is there anything else that we should add to the ratifant? So let's take a quick look, a review, a recap of this hybrid beast. Head, more or less like a rat, uh, except we kind of added that more of an elephant jaw and gave him a tusk. I wonder if ratifants are hunted for ivory. Gosh, I hope not. Rat ears, of course. He's got the rat back. Rat back with a little fur there, leading right into a rat tail, which, as I said, I think is the more compelling way to go in this hybrid animal. Um, I've got elephant feet for sure. Big cylinders. 
What else can we say? Uh, that's a ratifant. Another poem from Shell. So friends, it's another poem. Hope you don't mind. And it's another poem from the brilliant Shel Silverstein from the collection Falling Up. And I think it's somewhat appropriate for today's theme of strange creatures from our imaginations. I don't wanna to give too much away on this one. It's called The Toy Eater. You don't have to pick up your toys, okay? You can leave them right there on the floor. So when the terrible toy eaten Tuchel comes tiptoeing in through the crack in your door, he'll crunch all your soldiers, he'll munch on your trucks, he'll chew your poor puppets to shreds, he'll swallow your big wheel and slurp up your paints and bite off your dear Dolly's heads. Then he'll wipe off his lips with the sails of your ship and making a burpity noise, he'll slither away, but hey, that's okay. You don't have to pick up your toys. That goes out to my lovely sons, Jack and Henry. Really, it goes out to all of you who need to now take a moment, pause this video and pick up your toys. Of course, you don't have to pick up your toys, but then you run the risk of the terrible toy eating Tuchel eating all of your toys. Go pick up your toys. You get what you get and you don't get upset. So this is a little clay project called, you get what you get and you don't get upset. And here is what we get in this tray. These are the ingredients that we have available. A pencil, scissors, a lump of green clay, white, black, pink, and blue. Not sure what I'll do with any of these, although I might be able to use the white and black for eyes. What is this thing? Mm, okay. It's got like a pipe cleaner and it's fatter on some ends and thinner on the other. You ever seen anything like that? Surely in your home, you have a set of things. I don't know what they are that you could use in your art projects. Often it's smart to gather those things, look at what you have and build your project out from that. You get what you get here. And uh, I'm not about to get upset. So, I'm gonna start with the green. And again, we're not working with any specific animal today, so I get to kinda make this guy up. And I think I'm going to start by softening this clay in my hands. This is the oil-based modeling clay that we, we like to use here on this program. And I soften it with my hands. I warm it up a bit so it's not as hard as it was initially. It's got some other colors mixed into it too, but I'm not upset. How many legs should I give this creature? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll stand this up this way, and I'm gonna give a press down on one side, a press down on the other side, and I'm going to create a head and arms and legs out of this side. I'm rather a head and arms out of this side and legs out of this side. <laughs> and we'll start with the head and the arms. Got those pincher fingers, right? Get them in there. Start by pinching a bit of clay on one side, kind of a lump here and a lump here. You can steady your piece with one hand as you pinch with the other. And here I've got a couple of arms. Same idea down with the legs as well. And I'm starting with little lumps, but what I can begin to do as I have these lumps out there is pinch them to be thinner, you know. We have a strange little monster on our hands soon, I think. And I can kind of flatten these bits out. I think those are going to be his hands. It's kind of like a, a frog monkey, this guy. I don't know. Let's bring him in a little closer so you can see him. I'm going to work out these legs more. Pinching a foot and another foot. And this will not be a great view necessarily. But I'm going to check if he stands up, and he does. That's good. I'd like to stand him up at some point, but I think I will work him 
in this position first, fix him, finish him, and then stand him later. I'm now rounding off the head a bit. And I think I'm going to pinch out some fingers as well. Maybe a couple of claws. Maybe he's a two-clawed kind of a guy. So I've got my pincher fingers, and I'm pinching out. Not too hard, a couple of claws. And I'm pinching out a couple of claws. And in this case, friends and neighbors, I'm very much making it up as I go along. I don't have any reference to work with. This is out of, out of my head and my heart here. Nothing more nor less. Smoothing him out a bit, I think I will give him claws on his feet as well. Again, employ the old finger and thumb, pinch your fingers. There we go. Who is this creature? Gosh, I don't know. All right, let's talk about eyes. Well, I have some of this pink. I might start with some of the pink. I'm gonna pinch a bit of pink this way and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them pretty big eyes. I like that froggy idea. So I've broken my pink in half and I've rolled two little ball shapes. I'll set those here. And I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna press the head a bit. And actually, now that I think about it, I want to kind of pinch out two, two lumps on each side of the head here where we will put his eyes. And I've made a little choice here to now split my pink again. I don't need as much as I thought I did. I press those flat, and I'm going to put them here and here. And I want a bit more brow on this guy. So look at what I do. I amused myself by that. I don't mean to laugh at my own joke, but here, look at... Look at what I'm doing. I'm stealing his toes. We'll fix those feet in a moment, but I want a little extra clay for the head. I want a little clay to build up his eyebrows. So I'm leaving that on the side there. And uh, we got the sharp pencil in our bag of tricks here, one of the things we've been allowed. I'm gonna pop in those holes. You guys have seen this trick before, just the other day, I believe. That is, if you've watched any of the other daily preachers, you know, we did one on Monday that focused on elephants. Friends, I'm fixing this guy's toes again. And Tuesday, we offered a program focused on cats. Yesterday, if you tuned in, you saw our rat program. And today, of course, we elected to go weird. Remember, I've got this white clay. Pinch your fingers, back at it again creating a couple of pieces that will fit nicely into those ball shapes I made. The eyes are a bit buggy, and I like it. I'm happy with it. If he made a noise, it would be like this. Maybe not. He isn't finished, so who's to say? Should he have a big mouth? Yes. A little more pink here. Check it out. The only tool I have really to work with here is the pencil. I could stick the scissors in the clay, but I won't. Friends, let's talk about scissors for a moment. Scissors, these scissors in particular, they're meant for cutting paper. And if I cut other things, in particular like an oil-based clay, that oil gets all in my scissors and they don't work as well as they're meant to. And that, my friends, is a tragedy. These are great scissors, by the way. I love them. They're little, but they're sharp. Okay. Back to it. The mouth, I'm going to add a lip like this. I'm going to roll it out a bit. And I'm going to use the pencil, I think, to create that big mouth. And watch what I do here. I'm going to stick the pencil in. And I'm going to drag it one way and the other way. And I'm going to leave it at that. Friends, I've created the hole, but now I want to go in there with my fingers because it's not just about what you do with the tool. It's about getting in there with your hands afterwards, the greatest tools of all. Nice. I'm happy with this mouth. I'm kind of happy with the way he looks. 
he's starting to remind me of someone or something. I'm going out on a limb here. If anyone watched older Sesame Street episodes, there were those aliens that go, yip, 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 yip. They visit Bert and Ernie. Look up Bert and Ernie alien visit. You'll see what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to add a lip with this pink clay here. I'm rolling it out in between my fingers. I'm going to stick it right there. Get that bottom lip going. And you know, I want to add a tiny bit of black. Remember, I have this black. So that'll be helpful, I suppose, for his pupils, which I think I'll do little lines like that, but sideways, sort of. You know, I want him to have froggy eyes. I want his eyes to be frog-like. I'm breaking a small amount. Teeny tiny pieces, friends. Get good, get practiced, I should say. Spend some time practicing these teeny tiny pieces. Okay, so here he is. He's coming along. I wish I could give him a big set of teeth right here, but the white clay, hmm. Hey, you know what I have is this paper. Check this out. I'm gonna make a quick cut here and here and create a little triangle, I'm sorry, a rectangle of white paper. And I'm going to go in, I'm gonna cut that I think again, I won't need that much. And I'm going to cut little triangles into this paper. It, oh no, well that'll work. I cut that one off, but that, Going in and cutting little triangles out of the paper. And I'm trying to keep, as you can see, keep the paper together. I don't want it to fall apart. And I want to have a set of teeth that I can add to this guy. Now I do think I'll fold it over once like this, I'll fold in the bottom of the paper so I get a little more tooth showing and a little less paper. Does that make sense? This will also help when I have to stick it into the mouth there. Okay, come here you. I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna kind of pop it under that lip and I'm gonna use the clay to bring it up this way. How's he looking? He's got his lip. The more you push that clay up, the more you can get those teeth. And you know what I might do now? It needs a little adjustment here. I'm going to open that mouth a bit more. And I'm going to take a little extra green clay. And I'm going to pop it in here to really set it, to solidify it and get those those things to behave for me a little bit more. Let me get something that is particularly nice from that front view. And if I push that up more, it should be okay. I like the sticky outy lip look, so I'm going to add just a little bit more pink on that lip, right where it was to get that bottom lip going. He's got some paper stuck to him. I'm gonna adjust his little claws his toes. Okay. We're cooking now. Let's get this out of the way. And remember this thing? Huh. It's a pipe cleaner, but it has puffy parts and non-puffy parts. I don't really know if we'll need all of it, but I'd like to take maybe that much. I clip with my clean little scissors. And now I have this. And for those of you familiar with pipe cleaners, you know there's a wire inside that fuzz. And the wire will respond to you 
obediently. So I've created almost a bit of a kind of a headband, right? Yes, I'm going to give him some hair. And what I'm going to do, if you can see this, is take that wire, just press it right into the clay. And I'm going to take that wire and press it into the clay on each of his shoulders. Can you see that? To create really a fantastic head of hair for him. What do we think of this guy? What do you call this guy? Now I do have this extra blue clay, but I don't have much else to work with really. A secret mystery ingredient? No. Look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been told that I can also use this that was just discovered it's a doll's eye. What? A doll's eye. What can we do with the doll's eye and this blue clay? Well, should we make this guy a friend? Yes, let's do it. So the blue clay, I like squid-like things. I like things with legs like squid or octopi. Tentacles. Get those pinchers going again and gently work out. How many tentacles should I give him? If you said three, you read my mind. And I need to ask you to stop reading my mind. Get out of there. Just kidding. You're welcome anytime. Though, sometimes it can be an odd place. Here we go. Three legs I pinched out. I get them kind of pointy. Is it his pet? Is it his friend? And of course, it could be both. Now, this eye, you probably are thinking we pop it in right there. And I'm thinking, I like your thinking. I'm going to gently adjust the neck for this little fella. What should we call this little fella? What should we call this big fella? Let's hold off on naming for now. I still have some of this pink, so I'd like to set the eye in some pink so that we create a kind of a rim around the eye, very similar to uh, our frog friend. We'll call him Ted Frogman. How's that? Ted Frogman? Ted Frogman. I'm a little worried that Ted Frogman looks a bit like me. Keeps coming up today. Okay. And his little friend, I don't know what we'll call him. Should we give him a mouth? I think no mouth. I kind of like no mouth. I'll bring these guys up so you can see them a bit closer. Strange creatures based completely from the imagination. And I want to backtrack for a moment, guys, and just take a look. The doll eye is flat. There's usually a plastic piece that goes inside the doll head, but I remove those typically. You may ask, how do I come to have a doll eye? And uh, I do not remove the eyes from dolls, I can assure you. Doll eyes can be purchased in some doll shops. And there's a really wonderful doll shop in Ocean City, New Jersey, where I get my doll's eyes. I wish I could remember the name because I would, I would say it now. I'm proud of it. Um, and I think they're always happy to see me, bearded man in his 40s, coming in to pick up a bunch of doll eyes. Folks, I've really enjoyed creating these strange creatures with you, having this strange conversation. Grab the stuff that you have. Hopefully you have some clay around the house. Um, if not, Play-Doh will work. If not, you can make Play-Doh. You can also order clay if this is not an option and you are dying to do some of these projects. Send me an email and uh, maybe we can figure something out. We can get you some materials. That's that, friends.
As a famous old cartoon pig is fond of saying, that's all, folks. But listen, it doesn't have to be. This is my suggestion, nay, my challenge to you. Grab pencil, paper, markers, clay, what have you. Create your own new super cool creature. Use your imagination. Make up an animal. Give it a name. Give it a diet. Give it a habitat. Send it to me at The Daily Creature, and I will feature it as a part of this program. Simply email a photo and description of your creature to joe at xartpark.org. That's joe at xartpark.org. I can't wait to see your work. I can't wait to share your work. Get on it. Fantastic. Friends, if you join us tomorrow, you will see that our featured creature is the rabbit. Let's make art in the name of the rabbit together tomorrow. I can't wait. Apologies and shout outs to Beecroft's Tree Hyrax. Sorry you didn't make it, buddy. Maybe some other time. Friends, don't forget to be kind to each other. Be well. From Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Jovina. Stay creative. <laughs>